Welcome to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture, where we talk to creatives to break down their creative sauce, um, what inspires them, what keeps them going, and just their creative process overall. Mm -hmm. I'm Amira Smith, and I have, of course, my awesome co-host, Joshua Meekins, and we have another really great episode. What do you got to say about it, Josh? Man, this is this has been in the in, in the making, honestly. When, I, when we first started this podcast two years ago, um, you know, I reached out to my boy, had to make sure he can get on the podcast. Unfortunately, you know, that was the, literally the day that COVID hit Philly and Same shut us down, man. which was nuts. Um, so this has been in the making, but since then, you know, this man's growth has been incredible. Um, not only is he an amazing artist, but he's a philanthropist in his own right. He um, has single-handedly, you know, left his footprint in changing the city of Philadelphia. Um, and, you know, I can't big him up enough watching his journey for the past 10 years. So without further ado, I want to introduce my brother Dapper. Oh, man, I'm honored, bro. I've been paying attention to y'all growth, man. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all doing big things. It's crazy how long, like, two years, like, how much, like, stuff can change. Mm -hmm. Figure that was when y'all just started and yeah. then the COVID hit and then since then now it's like dang. <laughs> and you know we are catching we, some steam. We and we are kinda inconsistent, pot. We do admit <laughs> that. We don't record as often as we should, mm -hmm. but we are proud of the where we've come from. Mm -hmm. You know, like just the very first episode to then doing some big moves. Um so that kind of brings me to my first question for you. Like, mm -hmm. um, how does that feel? Going from an indie artist really you were, you were like really had an underground buzz in Philly mm -hmm. and in Philly's such a hard market yeah. because they wait for others to validate you like other cities and everything how does right. that feel now to like your growth right uh, it feels great you know I'm still indie you know I ain't signed to a major major label I'm signed to an independent label but um, that's just like distribution and management you know what I mean so Beautiful. I'm still considered an independent artist I can still sign to like a major right now but everything we're doing is like major so I, I like to use the term like independently major you know what I mean I like so that. I love that you know um I would say like torn was what I when I really saw it like mm. the the effect and the appeal that I was able to have in different not just different states but different countries mm -hmm. and just seeing um like I know in Philly you know there's gonna be a lot of people here that know the words to my songs yeah. I know all my homies and all my my family members gonna come out to those shows and stuff like that but when you I did a show in Amsterdam and a show in Paris and they're seeing them like going crazier than yeah. you know like my cult following normally would that was just like oh snap like we really got some you know so it's been great it's, it's been golden I'm, I'm really happy and I'm really excited for like the next step you know yeah. embracing everything now but I'm definitely feeling the change yeah. and um and I, I like where it's gone so we know who you are mm -hmm. but for people who may not be familiar right. how who is Dapper? So this is a different variable. When I first met you, it wasn't definitely. You know, it just changed up. What's, what's the growth looking like? Man, shoot. I mean, I feel like I'm like the same person. I'm just, you know, moving a little more accordingly. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like they say, you know, like a lot of people around you start changing or start making you feel that superstardom or whatever case, whatever it may be. You know what I mean? So I've been feeling it a lot from others and just like yeah. the way like people are handling me a little more. So it's kind of, I'm like feeling it a little bit, but. I'm, I'm, I'm me, you know what I mean? I, uh, I be chilling, you know? I'm the same person everywhere, really, you know? And I think that's where, like, a lot of the um, good stuff, like, comes from. Like, everything matches, you know yeah. what I mean? All Everything that is branded around me is exactly who I am as a person, you know what I mean? Like, the stuff that you see is exactly what I do, exactly who I am. The stuff I rap about is all facts, you know what I mean? I don't talk about killing people because I ain't never killed nobody, you know what I'm saying? So all good stuff all positivity all inspirational stuff you know i like to inspire you know that's why we do the philanthropist stuff and that's why you can hear it in the music so everything just goes in line absolutely when when did you first start rapping <laughs> and wait you're you're also a producer no i do no. songwriting okay i'll make beats though okay mm -hmm. that's just so title a lot to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah but like when was it something you always saw yourself doing as a kid i'm I always ask, I'm like, when you were yeah. five years old, is this who it's, you saw in your mind? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. when you see who you were gonna be when you grew up? Yeah, I, I always liked poetry. So that was mm -hmm. like a thing that I caught, caught when with, um, probably like seventh grade, I started like really liking poetry, like just, you know, violets are blue, <laughs> you know, stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. But just like real simple poetry always caught my attention. And then um, I had a scholarship to play basketball in college. And uh, I was playing ball at a school in um, 
uh, Boston, Massachusetts, right outside Boston, and yeah. there's a little town called Chicopee. And um, like a couple of the guys on the team was like rapping and recording in their room and stuff like that. And you know, we out there in West Bubble somewhere. So, <laughs> you know, it was just like, we just in there playing around. And then um, I ended up coming home. I, I didn't go back uh, to school that next summer. I ended up transferring to Temple. I stopped playing ball mm -hmm. and we started going to Temple. So I was back home, you know what I mean? And I'm from North Philly, so I'm literally walking distance from Temple, like where I'm uh, from. Yeah. So like my cousin, his name Doe, he got killed. But he was um like really pursuing rap, you know what I mean? And he took he would always take me to the, stu the studios and stuff like that. And I ended up hopping on a track of his and um just just for fun. And um, we brought it back to the block and everybody like, damn, like Pooh sound hot. That's when my, my my nickname is Pooda. And they like, yo, Pooh sound hot, Pooh sound hot. And he was like, Yeah, I, I told him he got some. I told him he got some. So Doe just started like pushing me from there and just like, no, you need to go to the studio, just start doing it, just yeah. see what happened. And Ari says, then we've been rolling. Wow. Yep. Did you finish um, Temple? I did, yup. I graduated. I got my BA in um, business. What did I got my joint now? Business administration? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got double yeah, check. Let me read yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, mine's in business legal study. Okay. I started off as an accountant major and then I changed it. My, I got my BA in legal, uh, business legal studies. Yeah. That's solid. Mm hmm. I, you know, and that, that I have a tendency. Yeah. No, I, I feel like sometimes I bulldoze you because I'd be like, mm, my next question no, 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 is. No, no. Yeah. But but so legal study, mm -hmm. do you think that's really informed you with contracts and knowing that like I gotta stay independent? Yeah. It's crazy. So it's more so just with the uh, entrepreneur stuff. But I'll, I'll tell you this: like my teacher who made me change my major to legal study. So what it really was, I was an accountant major for three years yeah. and I couldn't get past intermediate two. <laughs> Anybody who like does accounting or is an accounting major, intermediate two is like, I'm real good with numbers, but intermediate two is like the law of um, oh. accounting. So it's oh, like wow. the rules, what you can and can't do. Yeah. And um, I could not pass it. I, I felt that the first time I got a, if it's your major, you gotta get over like a, a C and I got yeah. a C minus. So oh. I had to take it again the next semester and got a D. So I went backwards, you know what I mean? So I, in order to graduate on time, I just changed my major to legal studies. And there was a teacher at Temple named Chris Cabot. He's like a huge entertainment lawyer. And um, he was just so thorough. Like he would take like the last 10, 15 minutes out of every class mm -hmm. and teach us something about life. Like, you know, like school, yeah. he'd be like, why am I going to school? This is not stuff that I could use. Yeah. He'll like just stop and Every 10 minutes at the end of class, he'll talk about something completely off track. Like he'll talk about how to manage your money, like financial literacy stuff at the end of every class. And he was on um, like our sports, my sports law teacher and then my entertainment law teacher. And I got A's in both of his classes. And um, and it, it, I tapped in with that. So more so like outside of even just like understanding contracts with music, it's just more so like just as an entrepreneur, yeah. the best thing to have in, in place is your accounting and your legals. Mm -hmm. So I went all through mm -hmm. college with accounting. And then I ended up ending it with the legal. So I literally went into business knowing how to handle my legal stuff and how to handle accounting. So I went in like already prepped, you know what I mean? So yeah. as I graduated. And that, that, I mean, one, I, I know we can hear it in your music for sure. Right. But two, like that's got to be like a, like a, like a, a spade in your back pocket. You know what I mean? For sure. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. that like, like a lot of people don't know that I really got like my degree and yeah. that I really like like we could go way left from music. I could we yeah. could start a business and go crazy. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like so we gonna get into the business and stuff. Yeah, we gonna, we sure. gonna make sure we hit the, hit the, hit the music mm -hmm. first for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you, uh, your album just was released. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for nothing, nothing too. too. That's that's yeah. that's incredible. How, how, how does it feel first and foremost? Yeah, what feels, does that feel like? It feels amazing, man. Like I knew it was like good. This is my first album that charted, so it cracked the top okay. 200 for hip hop artists globally. Yeah, I appreciate yes. that. Man. For sure. That's big. So it charted, and um, I was like really excited for that. Like yeah. all organic, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I ain't do nothing extra, and a lot of like my numbers. So like selfies in the rave, which is my biggest single. Mm -hmm. Um, so I put the like the way I did the album. Like I, the album was kind of like already prepared to be released before I signed my distribution deal. Mm. So when you sign your distribution, it takes a little time for them to transfer everything over. Yeah. So all my stuff was still like independent. So the major single I put out with Benny didn't even register for the distribution deal when it charted. Wow. So it charted without my biggest single even being on there. So That's crazy. had that been accounted for, I would have been probably like way further in the, okay. in, the uh, in the top chart. So it was like a lot of little, you know, it's just like be so many little loopholes and little legal stuff that be going on like with the music stuff too. So yeah. no, I'd be wanting to drop a lot more, but you know, it'd be a bunch of little stuff going on, but. Yeah. 
Um, but I, like I said, I feel great, man. Like the reception of it has been real well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people tuned in. It's like a lot of people that I'm just, anytime like you walk into a room and you talk to a couple people, and multiple people done listened to it yeah. and gave it wow. a listen already. That's like that's cool enough for me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like as long as people is listening, I'm I'm excited. You know what I mean? Happy for happy about it. So okay, I'm feeling real good about it. You mentioned Benny, but you kind of glazed over. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tell the, the people butcher, Benny who Benny and, the butcher, and how did man. that Big come dog. about? Yeah. Man, so the Benny situation is crazy. Like, you know, and I don't got no problem ever talking about this. I paid Benny for a feature. Okay. Yeah. You know, like I paid him for a feature. Um, actually, the first time it happened, shout out to hip hop since 1987. Our uh, relationship came from Dave brought Benny to the city to do a show at the TLA. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, you know, he's a spitter. So, you know, they tapped in with the spitters from Philly. So they asked me to open up. I got paid to open up for Benny. Yeah. And the mix of being there, I tapped in with him and it's just networking, just opening my mouth. And, um, speaking to the people behind the scenes where I was working with Benny. So I tapped in with Jake, who's Benny's manager and who's currently my manager now. So this was um this was right before COVID. So I tapped in with Jake and you know, we just, you know, got cool. I was talking to them, you know, Benny met me, you know, and all that. It was cool, just real organic. And then um I ended up communicating with Jake, his manager. I paid Benny for a feature. Yeah. And then we went to LA and shot the video. So Benny comes to LA, you know, we got the video laid out. It's real nice out there. He like, yo, I like how you move, bro. Like, okay. you know, he paying homage, he's yeah. showing love. He like, yo, like, you got this shit going on. Like, you remind me of like, when I first started, like, like you investing in yourself, you paying for a feature, you doing this and that. So I see you like that. So that was that, boom. In a minute, like, I don't got no problem asking questions. I asked Jake flat out, like, yo, y'all got any spots on the on, on Benny upcoming tour that I could hop on or, or anything like that? He's like, yo, you from Philly? What we'll throw you on the Philly joint? Like, like come on. Like, yeah. just, like, we like your stuff. You got a song with bro, you hop on the Philly joint. So um, they put me on a Philly show, and then they put me on Grizel that had a tour at the time. They put me on a L.A. show, mm -hmm. and I killed it. Like, the reception was crazy. Yeah. So then they asked me to go on tour with Benny. And um, it was supposed to just be like the first leg. And, um, you know, a couple of little stuff happened. It was like still in the middle of COVID. I think one of the one of the other openers had COVID mm -hmm. or something like that. So they asked me to go on the second leg. So I ended up doing like damn near the whole tour with bro. And after that, and, like every night, like, like I got like, I got a great set. Like I'm, I'm just as good as a performer too. Absolutely, yeah. So like when I walked out of stage and like cut handful of the cities, like people are roaring. So if Benny's downstairs and he's coming up next, he's like, yo, who the hell is up there? Like, yeah. just, <laughs> and it was like, yo, that's Dapper again. He's like, what the fuck? So yeah. now it's like, yeah. yo, they, they sound like I'm out there. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so that happened. And then the tour wrapped up, you know, I was so grateful, you know, I tapped in with everybody. And at this time, you know, we tapping in with the interns, we tapping mm -hmm. in with the producers, we tapping in with the sound crew, we tapping in with everybody except for Butcher, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, mm -hmm. we tapping in with the little people, quote unquote, you know what I'm saying? So by this time, we lock in with the whole BSF, that's Benny's label, and um, just building relationship. And um, when I got off tour, every last one of his A&Rs and like managers of his team, yeah have reached out to me individually on some like yo you got management or like yo you looking for consultant uh yo who do handles your marketing everyone and or like yo, like, yo i want to sign you like just individually each person so i call ak who's my manager and i'm like yo yeah nigga. you know i'm talking my shit i'm like you know all, all, all the bsf everybody reached out to me except for you man what's up dog like this and that out of out of he's like yeah he's like damn what's going on out of out of and he's like, let me call you right back. He hang up on me. He called me back two minutes later. And we on FaceTime here in the car. He's like, so everybody reached out to you, huh? He flipped the phone over. Benny's in the passenger seat. He's like, shit, you might as well rock with us. Like, you might, if everybody wants you over here, then you yeah. might as well make it official. Like, come come rock with us or whatever. So then we, we solidified the management situation from there. And then um, just kept rolling. They threw me on a tour with Conway, the overseas tour with Conway. Yeah. And then... Um, we locked in a distribution deal, so I got they they uh, helped distribute this last album, and then I got another album that I'm gonna drop this year, another project, and that's gonna be under them. Okay. And then we'll you know go back to the plan, go back to the drawing board, negotiate what we're gonna do. And figure and, you it out, know, right. if I see what's what. That's what's up. I mean, even you be able to say like you know humble enough to know that like this is my approach and this is my process mm -hmm. is a big deal because I feel like you know you 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 can talk to other artists and they're just you know this is what happened or you know, it's, it's a flex. But I always feel like your entire process or as long as I've known you, you've been able to say like you know this was my method and this works. You know yeah. that goes. And into, I've got no problem with sharing it. Exactly. Ever. And we mm -hmm. talk about the analytics. Like so, for those who don't know, we shoot an old head the movie right now. This is our main character, <laughs> LA. 
You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Even doing We're it, doing he, the, the acting, acting too. and yeah, the music. We're rolling. Crazy. But, mm-hmm. you know, when you're on set, you get chances to have conversations and opportunities, you know, as time passes. So we've, we've rapped for, you know, how many times? For sure. But one of the things you, he, t- he said is that, like, you know, he knows his analytics. He knows his numbers going back Ooh. to his degree. He knows what he's worth. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So being able to then, you know, communicate that and have the, hum- the humbleness to say, like, you know, this, I know what this will add value to me. It's an asset to me. And then my business is from there. So I think that really does, like, separate you a lot Absolutely. from a lot of people that, you know, Know, that might be in the same pool as you mm-hmm. so I, th- I think that's a big deal yeah. as far as that goes no, um, you gotta know yourself that's a, a lot of stuff and just, just as in life in general like you gotta have an idea of who you are as a person you gotta mm-hmm. know what you like know what you dislike you know what I mean you can't be easily navigated out here about other people's likes and dislikes you know what I mean like mm-hmm. I'm real tapped in with myself you know what I mean and I, I know what I reflect you know what I mean so I just be trying to keep that rolling I think that's a, a huge testament to the education period Mm. like whether if someone does a business accelerator program that's like shorter or you really go to school it's like because you have the confidence of your education behind you and like it's it's like you're in a you're not taking a passive role and i see we see i think Mm -hmm. a lot of artists who take a real passive role of Mm -hmm. do you like me or not how much is this worth to you where you're like no this is how much it's worth and i have right. comps and i mm-hmm. have references and i know what this is worth because i'm well researched and you're not taking this like passive role even before the deal came you know mm-hmm. what i mean so that's like go to school Absolutely. i'm talking about even yeah, a couple classes yeah, like sure. you gotta mm-hmm. you know yeah, i can hold the conversation like that's such a major thing too like yeah. i don't have no problem with dm and nobody i don't have no problem with walking up to nobody greeting them or saying what's up or paying homage yeah. and i know I can, I can hold the conversation with anybody i got like the best of both worlds like yeah. my family i was raised in the streets you know what i mean i was I about raised to say, from, you probably got an all right family yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> no yeah, because that's know, different yeah. for philly people like philly is a very People who branched out and go to LA and go other places, they're all the same kind of tribe of people who are, you open yourself up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They face the world and say, here I am, let's collab. That's Where, you know, so much of Philly, like I'm from North too, and it teaches you a lot of ways of being protective. Mm. And, you know, you're always defensive, mm. where it's like, business is offense you got to be able to show and share who you are and if people say i don't like it you still gotta you gotta take it you can't really you know you don't feel you want to fight every time Mm -hmm. they be like what Mm -hmm. oh okay dickhead let me look at you and it's like no no constructive criticism Mm -hmm. yeah that's what like a lot of people they scared of being rejected like like i got a lot of like rapper homies that just like yo what's the form and like what's the deal and i just be like bro you just gotta reach out like you know like we could curse on here yeah yeah Yeah, like you know philly get caught up in the dicky and mindset Mm -hmm. like Mm-hmm. Or being Joe, you know what I mean? I don't got no problem with paying out, yo, bro, that shit was fire. Somebody I never knew, yo, that shit fire, bro, ah, 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 And then they hit you right back, boom. Now, somebody that you that you would have never knew or thought that this person ever knew who you were or seen this and that. Like, it's like another little rapper in the city that I tapped in with. I was like, like, we follow each other, but we like, he like never liked none of my stuff. I don't really mm-hmm. like, like, we don't really, um, engage with each other. Yeah. And I just ended up sending them a DM, like, yo, bro, your shit fire, keep going, like, you got it. He hit me back a whole paragraph like, yo, I, I loved you for acting before I even knew about the music, bro. Like, the music fire. I love that you're in your own lane. You ain't falling into this and that. And I was like, damn, like, that's crazy. And it was just a little homage joint. And we just tapped in and we left it at that. But it's mm-hmm. like now we register with each other, you know? So it's exactly. like I don't got no problem with showing love. And I think that's why once I got into that mindset, that's when everything just started elevating. Yeah. And that's why I just be telling everybody. I said, bro, you just got to open your mouth, bro. Like, if they there, like, you, you in a room with some. I froze up one time in my life. And that's when I was in the elevator with J. Cole. He caught me off guard. Oh. You know what I mean? And I I was like, he, he, he walked on the elevator, like, yo, what's up, y'all? And I was like, yo, what's up? And I just was stuck. <laughs> like, and I ain't say a word to him after that, but that's the only time I ever, like, was in a good position where I could, yeah. yo, damn, what's up? Uh, like, giving that chance again, I'd be like, yo, Cole, uh, does I do this and that, you know yep. what I mean? Yeah. I think Cole know who I am now. Like, we done had conversation, you know. That's good. It's been, my, my, my name done came across his desk before, so he know who I am now, but at the time, like, I was like, damn, I wish I would have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really, like, it, it introduced myself to Cole, you know what I mean? Yeah. But other than that, I don't got no problem with tapping in with nobody. Yeah. That, I mean, that shows maturity and growth. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I want to I wanna get into just real quick a couple of t- tracks you got because I know we all the topics we don't talked about now have been tapped into each one of these tracks. So sure. I'm going to go with just my Wait, favorite. Oh, as, who, who's the most, uh, your musical inspiration? Oh, oh shoot, yeah, This is when we talk about, like, paying homage yeah. and who. Everybody know that one. You know oh, who it is? I don't know who. Nipsey. I Nipsey knew you were supposed to. Because no, I was going to say a lot of things yeah. you're talking about remind me of Nip. Because I yeah. was going to something that 
I learned from the that 50 taught him about I was like have you released the album or are they mixtapes because mm-hmm. he was talking about when you first do an album release and as he said 50 told him like it's great that you've only done mixtapes because when you do mixtapes they have to comp you at who is the artist in your area at the time yeah. and he was mm-hmm. like and you got like you know Snoop and people like that he was like but as soon as you drop an album whatever that first album's performance is that's the numbers that they try to like put you in and mm-hmm. that's what they expect mm-hmm. you for next mm-hmm. so if you don't sell great because you're new you know what I mean so yeah, that's I can see Nip because Nip yeah, was. I ain't never heard that. One. I don't watch every. <laughs> <Nip>. <laughs> really? like, we watch every joint. Yeah, so it's Nip like is, that's crazy. Like I this just on being researched. Yeah, Nip's just my guy. Me, yeah, yeah, like like then I'm thinking like oh education, but like I think of like a wallow who mm-hmm. well researched. Yeah, that's just what like, I love low. Mm-hmm. You know, you get into them numbers and you just really do all your research so that you can step in a room with confidence. For sure. Yeah. What was what was most inspirational about Nip to you? I'll say my, my daughter named Victory. That was his oh, last wow. album. And my dog yeah. named Hustle. <laughs> Real talk, I love Nip. I got a huge mural of Nip in my crib yeah. and everything. But um, what was that last question, though? What was like the most, the thing you loved most about him as far as inspiration wise? Yeah. How he carried himself as a man. Mm. Mm. Just how like he just handled himself. He was just so like big on his morals he's such a loyal person like yeah like you could just i just feel like he's just so trustworthy and just so moral like i, I believe him like you mm-hmm. know like they say like when it comes to like entertainment and all that if so, you could believe somebody you got something or um if people want to be you then you got something yeah. and if you got both then you got a star so Ooh. people either gotta believe you or they gotta want to be you so like yeah for instance like you got like dirk people want to be him and people mm-hmm. believe he's really in the streets like for how sure. he rap about you know what for I mean sure. then you got Nip like I believe everything that he said you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying for and sure. like that's I can tell that's really who it is who he is and then you know everybody co-sign him you know what I mean yeah. but his just morals and the stuff that he like just spoke on you know the Dr. Sebi's and the mm-hmm. like the you know he brought a lot to light yeah he brought a yeah. lot of light to the yeah. to the game a lot of inspiration all his music just really tapped in and you know he had that he was you could tell he was educated but he was also in the streets and i kind of yeah. just really like like felt everything he, yeah. he, he had was, going on he was a um high school dropout mm. but extremely well read extremely well mm. uh researched mm-hmm. let's get into the album okay i'm gonna bring that other film back around we had talked about nigga. all the pieces so like uh, uh, i'm gonna just go off these songs but i'm gonna just get into the topic after that but we uh, i'm gonna talk about my favorites real quick black dollar Black Sophies in a race. Mm. That much. Separate ways in any other way, just because like Damn, I ain't bro, never seen whole, I, I ain't never seen Dap the Bar. This I'ma just tell you right Dap now. I ain't, I ain't never seen Tone calls him Dap the Bar. I, I, I understand why. Now I get it. Now yeah. I get it. And then we have what's happening. And I'm a, I'm a big West Side and a Reason fan. So oh, that was that lit. was that was nice to see that. Yeah. But I'ma just I, singing. Yeah, my yeah. my boy Dap was on the drums no, singing. Busy on but that. Dap the bars, but like, like you know the bars get high. Nah, yeah, like, nah, yeah, like, yeah, like that. No, I ain't hit it like that. Nah, I always like knew how to like hold the note, like just like you know, like a real mellow tone. Like, yeah. I got that that voice that can just be, like float like a little melodic yeah. and then you know throw a little throw a little tune on me yeah. to spice me up a little bit it was you clean. Know, they, they made me sound real good I was you know? clean <laughs> I was like okay I'll see you yeah, I'll see you yeah I felt good with that it took about 300 takes but you got it done <laughs> it <worked. laughs> now each track I'm gonna I'm say it was definitely fire but it yeah. goes more into I think for me knowing what's your you, favorite if you could pick one that's I'm like, a, I'm that's like, a, like the what's happening what's I'm happening yeah, it just flowed yeah, the too well and the concept no the concepts itself is just like you know you always one step ahead. You're trying to be one step ahead. You know, you're talking about what happened. I'm talking about what's happening. You know right what I'm saying? Now. Like, uh, yeah. it's, it's, I'm making it happen. Yeah, so for, like, for sure. me, that was, that was a big deal. But I mean, like, yeah. the concepts, again, like, Black Dollar, I think we're going to go into philanthropy stuff, but you're a businessman. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You got daycares. You got establishments. You run things. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you're also giving the money back to the community. You're expe- extending that Black Dollar. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to just say, even though it's self generate you know, we heard the Benny feature, but, like, the fact that you had the ability to, like, talk about your growth talk about you know how that has been affecting you and the things that you've been doing mm-hmm. it's interesting to see that and I was going to ask you know, you know you had talked about it earlier but like how is it knowing that you know the notoriety is growing but you're still trying to still maintain yourself right uh it's cool man like it, 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 it'd be weird like it's different you know because I still being like you know the the mental is still not really like grasping it. and i you know i still got a lot of growth to do. i ain't no huge star you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying not yet but like I just, i'm just so like cool like yeah. just so tapped on myself like it ain't much that could change me you know i'm super approachable and 
Like, you know, I still be doing my daily routine, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I still hands on with all the businesses. Like, mm -hmm. you still could pull up and catch me there, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. So, it's, you know, I was trying to start to like separate and just be a little more hands off with stuff now, but mm -hmm. I'm tapped in. I love the people, you know what I mean? I love being around. I love tapped in with the youngins, you know what I'm saying? I love my teachers, love everybody that I be tapped in with, you know what I mean? I love my team. So if they there, I'm there, you know what I'm saying? So, so you've been rapping how many years, would we say? Uh, I've been probably like rapping like cool for probably like 10 years. And how, how many I'm years has it been the business like, like that entrepreneurship? Side? Five years. Like five yeah, years. Yeah, I, I just cracked my fifth year in business and I've been rapping for probably like like five years. Like, it, Does like it five, feel different years. when you look at the those first five years versus when you have businesses like to kind of so this was it made me think of me talking about nip because yeah. he talked about like you know they had marathon clothing and other things mm -hmm. and he was always like having other businesses that you eat from helps take the desperation off the music mm -hmm. it's like you don't you don't feel yeah. like this gotta connect i need yeah. this check you can yeah. really do your art yeah. the way I, you want to i don't do music for the money you know what i mean i, I don't make a ton of money off my music I make money off of everything else the music is just like my leverage you know what I mean that's how people know me and so it's like it's kind of like a commercial like an ad for everything else that I'm doing you know what I mean so it's like alright you gonna start following me you tapped in you listening to me through the music but now you know social media and all that okay ooh boop here go some merch too boop oh damn here go another yeah. business that you could spend some money mm -hmm. with you know what I mean so now like it's starting to become a business a little more for me now but Overall, I'm still having fun with it. You know what I mean? I try not to look at it too much as something that I should be making money off. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't do music for money. You know what I mean? I do yeah. everything else for money. You know yeah. what I mean? I do it just to talk about or like therapy about everything else that I'm doing. Mm. And, and that's smart because yeah. it, it keeps there, not for nothing, but there's some <laughs> artists, you know, they might catch lightning in a bottle. Mm. They got a couple hot singles and then you can feel the desperation yeah. mm -hmm. to keep repeating keep going. because yeah. it's sometimes it's all they have. You know yeah, what I mean? And yep. then they're just like, oh. That's why, that's why. And then, it's, then you why see them start so much morph going on. Yeah, and they morph into somebody else and you like, well, how come you looking, you looking mm -hmm. and sounding more like Dirk or wait, who yeah. are you? Like, yeah. It's crazy. I just seen like like you know like Philly catching like a little party wave right now. Yeah, I just seen like the two Jersey, of like my the favorite spitters. <laughs> yeah, real talk. I seen like two of my favorite like spitters like them just popped out with a party song, and I'm like, <sighs> mm. like why y'all doing that? You know yeah. what I mean? Like just stay true to yourself. Like you don't got to catch the wave, and I, and I understand it though. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just like all right, this ain't working. You try something else. So now I understand it. I get it. But it's like, and that's like been a thing with me. Like I never tried to like do what everybody else was doing. Like this is me, and I just stay on stay the course. Like I try to smooth and inspirational type rap. That's what I I like pride myself on. You know what I mean? So it's cool. That's solid. That's solid. I mean, even then transitioning, I I want to talk about real quick just on that much. I feel like that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the theme for that much was humble and hungry. Humble and hungry, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can like, hear the hunger all on that. I'm saying, how do you how do you still stay hungry? Like I know we just talked about the same piece where it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it doesn't feel desperational. Like you don't have to put yeah. something out, but like how do you take that patience to find out, you know, this is hitting, my lyrics are in here, all this topic is relevant. How do you kind of still maintain that hunger? I'm like a like a naturally like self inspired person. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know like what like triggers like my hunger, like my hustle, you know what I mean? Like I just like rolling, like, I don't like sitting around, you know what I mean? Like, if I go a week without doing nothing productive, or like two days without be doing nothing productive, feel crazy. that next week, I'm, fl I'm like crazy, <laughs> I ain't sleeping, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't know like what really inspired me, like I have new inspirations now, you know, having a family, Absolutely. having a daughter and all that now, so I have new inspirations, but overall, I'm just like self, like a, like a self ticker, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I'm like, my dad was a hustler, my mom was a hustler, so I think it's just like a natural, like, just go like I just want to go like and then it's just like new levels like all right boom 50,000 100,000 million 2 million like come on like 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 and just a lot of stuff and then it's just always new levels and then you know I, I pay attention to social media I see what other people be doing too and I get inspired easily yeah. you know what I mean so if I see something that somebody's doing that's dope I'm like damn why we ain't do that you know like, mm -hmm. come on let's do something dope like that or come up with our own idea and you know and like I want to give back. I want to take care of my family, so I got to keep hitting, hitting new heights so that I can put myself in position to be able to take care of my folks. You know, absolutely, absolutely. So let's let's get into the brand. Let's get into the let's business. Do it. Big young with young options. With, young with options. Big young with options. Yeah. How did young with options one come about? What does it mean? For, first and foremost, because I went, right. I've been to the brunch. Yeah, I see Wait, what it's about. Yeah. Is it a nonprofit? It's not. 
like okay. officially a nonprofit, but mm-hmm. we do a lot of nonprofit stuff. But it's really just me giving my money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So <laughs> we do a lot of like nonprofit stuff, but we don't get like grants and okay. like the it's not a, a five. What is it? Five hundred one two three. Five hundred one two three. So C3. it's not official yet, but you know we um we got other nonprofits like under the umbrella that we yeah. that we um partner with like the Care Foundation that's ran by Serena Hauser, and um we tap in with them and we collab on a lot of stuff. So it'd be dope. Like a lot of the kick um like um giving to the homeless and like scholarships and stuff like that. You know it'd be dope. But the daycare itself is a for-profit business. Gotcha. But so you, you ain't getting no, no tax break, no tax hit. Man, I, and, and that's my fault. Like, you know, like they don't teach us young black people about credit and taxes. You know you what I'm saying? You in school for accounting. They What's don't teach us on? about it though. They ain't, I went to school for Josh, accounting. They ain't Josh, say, Josh, they ain't say nothing about listen, like, Josh, they I got say, you. We are in this they, space. Yeah. When I went to school for accounting, they taught me how to do accounting for someone else. They didn't teach me about my credit and my taxes. So. I just want to talk about that real that. quick. Like we, we talk about this all the time. Like the business, yeah. they teach you how to work for somebody else, but the moment you start working for yourself, it's a whole other crash course yeah. on how things are supposed to be That's done, crazy. Yeah. which is nuts. Yeah, like ain't, you, ain't nobody tell me about credit until recently. Ain't nobody tell me about uh, the taxes. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what the Jewish families teach their kids. You Absolutely. know what I mean? They already be they be coming out of high school. My homie came out of high school with an eight hundred credit score. And, not, and, and, and they ain't know what to do with it You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying like, yeah. But his, this family set him up like that You know what I mean We didn't. We wasn't taught that That's what Like I'm excited for like The next generation You know they, Especially in Philly They stopped killing each other There's a lot of people Who are willing to teach them About credit And teach them mm-hmm. about taxes mm-hmm. We just starting to catch that Very Like true. our parents weren't entrepreneurs This is our We're the first class of entrepreneurs You know what I'm saying Like our parents were taught To graduate high school And get jobs You know yeah. what I'm saying So that's like, crazy. Yeah, like it's like the generational thing, but like we about to have all them tools, you know what I'm saying? And I, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of giving them tools, teaching the kids about credit and taxes. So that's crazy. It was like a lost generation. Like uh-huh. our our grandparents, entrepreneurs. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And then their kids, everybody, school, graduate, secretary, whatever. And then we here here we are. Yeah. Well, here yeah. y'all are. Cause y'all <laughs> are youngins. Nah, look, everybody <laughs> like this. That generation of people just rolling. Like a lot of people want to work for themselves. It's yeah. actually like it's like such a weird time. Like nobody wants to work. You know, everybody wants to work for themselves. Tell me so about you're not it. getting like good like work for hire right now. Yeah. You know, so it's a, just a tricky time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so young with options. Okay. There's a weekend that like so. All right, like, I'm just gonna go down the list because we <laughs> talked about it. All no, right, so the research it says, list. Inspirational to the young people, yes. Mm-hmm. You have so, scholarship for black boys. Yeah, so that's through our daycare. Um, our daycare is in West Philly, 5310 Market Street. And then we got okay. another one, 1016 Cotman Ave, both of them in Philly. And my man actually visits those. Yeah, He'd be I'm on there. set. Take oh, a break. Tell break we don't be it. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, not. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be there, man. It's cool. We've been chilling. You know, we done had a couple little weird pop ups before, but. Nothing too crazy. Nothing that got Silent, out of hand. Silent. Like people be chilling. So and then you book know, bag drives. Yeah, we prom had, dress giveaways. Yeah, and a lot of that stuff be through the daycare. Like at the daycare, like we use that as home base. Mm. So you know, um, we did a couple prom dress giveaways. We did a scholarship. So it's like the Young with Options scholarship. So it goes to like anybody that I really like see reflected in me. Like mm. when I was in high school, like I was exposed to a lot of sports. You know, I was in high school on a basketball scholarship. I was good in baseball. I liked music. I liked acting. So that's where like the Young with Options come from. Just private the, school, I, high school. I went to private okay, school. Okay, you said yeah. scholarship. I went to friends. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, uh, just like. You don't really know what you like if you're not exposed to it. Yes, you know what indeed. I mean? So that's like my thing. That's what I just be wanting to help with. Just like at our daycare, like we try to bring in like chef, like a chef here and there, mm-hmm. firefighter here and there. Yeah. Um, we we setting it up right now to bring in one of my homies as a photographer, just so that you can just start seeing different stuff at a young age. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yo, I remember I met a photographer. Now I want to do photography. Yeah. So it's like, how, it how do you know yeah. what you like if you're not being exposed to it? And I was exposed to a lot, so you know I'm grateful for that for my parents. Um, you know, they sent me to the little random camps and the little cool <laughs> stuff to try new things. You know yeah. what I mean? So, our first uh, last year was our first year doing. The, last year we didn't do it because the COVID and all that. Yeah. But the year prior to that, we gave we gave like a five hundred dollar scholarship to this one kid. His name was Kyle Hot Tower, <laughs> and um, what it was was um we tapped in with Boys Lat and and he he was like like the uh, captain of the wrestling team. Um, they had a like a ro- robotics yeah. um, mm-hmm. cl- course there, so he was like nasty with making robots 
And I'm like, man, that's boy, a star. You feel yeah. me? And it's like, we just wanted to highlight him, let him know that he was doing his thing. And that's just something that I want to do every year, like for like young black boy that's just doing extracurricular activity outside of just doing good in school. So you got to yeah. be doing good in school. You got to go to college. You got to be doing other stuff outside of just going to school too. You know what I mean? Play a little ball, Absolutely. do a little something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So oh, That's important because mm-hmm. like they say, the um, exposure gap is what, Closes the achievement gap. That's it. You know, and mm-hmm. as kids from the '80s, we used to go to the, the no, for we go to the firehouse. I remember, yeah. like we used to go to the firehouse, like sixth, first grade. We all go there, and they show us everything. Yeah, and yeah, kids, that, that they barely have, crucial, man. they barely have field trips nowadays. Yeah, that's real. it's like they just they want to test the kids mm-hmm. to death. And I, I want to touch back, touch base on like what you say. You got to like, oh, I think a big thing for our podcast is see it to be it. You know, that's mm-hmm. a really big creation of why we even had this. So, like, if we, we want people on the show or even people to be exposed to, like, you know, if you're an artist, okay, this is how, this is how my journey went. Right. You know, you know, I'm a businessman. This is how my journey went. Mm-hmm. We had one of my um, one of my OGs on here, Daryl Edmonds. Shout out Daryl. I got to shout him out. Mm-hmm. He's got a, literally a, a group. He, Friday is tied there. Yeah. He has a, a program for young black boys to, you know, go to college tours. Um, he speaks on behalf of them a lot of times in their high schools, knows the education realm, and like talked about what that's like. You know what I mean? So like to be able to say like you know we want to find people in a bunch of different fields, preferably people of color, mm-hmm. who can then you know attest to and tell their story how they got there. My my homie Dom, who was who yeah. does um who does design for uh, Jordan Brand right now. Yeah. You know how she even got into that. How that even yeah. looked? Because you know how do you how do you get to designing sneakers? You know yeah, what I'm saying? People yeah. don't know. Yeah. So it's important. Like you, they, we don't get taught these things. So we yeah. want to be you know build an avenue and a, a place for people to talk about that kind of that's stuff. That's heavy. I tip my hat to y'all. That's thorough. That's what I that's what that's what I love to say. That's what I'm about. Yeah. So I appreciate y'all for that. Now what I see this is in quotes. Weekend in Africa, 2021. What is it, I, Josh? It was on it, it, I, in my research. It might have been somewhere. It might have been pending. But <laughs> I was about to say you might be stalking my uh, one of my boards or something. You know, I got a whole bunch of boards with like vision board type stuff. Where I be Josh, jotting down my notes. Listen now, I, now, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what y'all doing. So, <laughs> so like I said, so we got the Care Foundation, which is you know a partner of the Young with Options brand. So. That's something that uh, my girl, Serena, she was doing, and she went to like Haiti, Africa, and she does a lot of stuff overseas and like like works in these orphanages, just lives in their conditions oh, wow, yeah. for wow. like weeks at a time and gives back to the kids through that way. So that's something super thorough. That's all her. Yeah, yeah, she trying to get me tapped in oh, with dang. that. You know what I mean? So Listen, that's that, dope. The research is back in, back in, back in the day. So yeah, yeah I'm like, damn. I'm like, no, I, me oh, personally, yeah, I've never been to Africa. Because you were supposed to come before yeah, the quarantine oh, right. started. Oh, that's, that's right. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never dang, been to I, Africa. I'm, yeah. I'm really a stalker for her. That's crazy. I'm sitting here like, yo. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like he was in my laptop. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you. You I'm bored for that one. That's crazy. Yeah, you bored for that. That's crazy. Tapped into everything. That's what's up. I like so that. Let me, let me ask you for real. Like, mm-hmm. and I consider you this, and I, I I I hope the city of Philadelphia also considers you this. But you're a voice for the younger generation. 100%. You know what I'm saying? You you're giving them inspiration, you're giving them hustle. But you're, not, you're doing it through your actions and your words. What does that What does that feel like? Is that Is that you filling a space that you wish you had, or is that you creating a lane that needs to be established? I ain't never look at it as like either one. I just feel like that's my gift. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like I'm tapped in. Like, I know my spiritual gifts. You know, I, uh, my spiritual gifts are leadership, administration, and um, mercy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I care about people. You feel me? I really care. Like, when people going through stuff and we having a like heart to heart conversation, I, I put myself in your body. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I tap in. Like, damn. Like, I really like be mercy for people, and then I'm a leader. So I think of how I can lead you, or how I can navigate you in the best direction. And that's it. Just like articulating everything that I be doing. You know what I mean? Because that's really who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like if you, if, if it's any way I can help you, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't burn me out financially. But any yeah. kind of advice yeah. or any kind of network I got. Anybody like I don't even gotta like really know you. If you be like, yo, you got somebody over at Apple Music? Oh yeah, I got high, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just how I am. It's yeah. not gonna kill me. You know what I'm saying? Like just don't burn me out. Like I always say that utilize me, but don't use me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't got no problem with people utilizing me. You feel me? So and and, and and I don't mind being that voice. You know what I mean? I, I love it. I, I love having that title because like. If I if it ain't me, then who? You know yeah, what I'm exactly. saying? Like you look at the role models, you listen to a lot of the rappers that people are listening to. You listen to a lot of the Philly rappers that are considered the top rappers in Philly right now, and they not really, 
they're speaking from a place of a lot of like pain and a lot of like PTSD you know what I mean mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if if I got a young boy that's in high school from Philly and he got a lot of good stuff going on but the only rappers that he listening to is people that done shot a hundred people mm -hmm. and like really going through some traumatic stuff you know what I mean like we all we go through our trauma so you know I love the rap I love them rappers mm -hmm. too you know what I mean so I'm not dissing nobody but like that can't just be the only music that these that these youngins is listening to and hearing you yeah. feel me so you know I like to talk about cool stuff keep it player you know what I mean like yeah. I, I look at like all, a lot of the videos it'd be a hundred young boys in the kitchen with guns like uh, no, nobody got no girls in their videos no more you know what I mean yeah. like damn yeah. we're having to get in girls and being a cool the fly young boy yeah. you know what I mean so yeah. I'll be trying to put that feel back in like get dressed go out have a good time like a lot of people can't even do shows in the city because they beefing with a lot of people yeah. you know what I mean yeah. like I don't want to really be in that field you know what I mean like you know I'm prepared for you know if anybody want to play with me but at the same time it's like I don't, that's not what I want you know yeah. that's, that's, cause that's not a life that's like not a life yeah, to have yeah that's not a life to right? have yeah that's not a life to have I'm, like, I'm trying to be that. on the yacht yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure you want to be, be comfortable you want to be living good and that's what I just want to show people like yo we can live good and yeah. it don't cost a lot you know what I'm saying like you don't gotta it ain't your life savings to have fun and live good it's just using your networks yeah mm -hmm. Mm, like my first time I went to Dubai I went to Dubai for free My first time going You know what I mean A lot of people don't know It just was a matter Of utilizing your networks yeah. I you know need that I mean? network. And before, it's like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Let me tap in with you real quick. Yeah, yeah, real rap, but it's just like, that's yeah, good. you just got to tap in with people, man. That's yeah. my, that's like the main thing, main piece of advice I could get to anybody, bro. Don't be scared to tap in. Yeah. I listen. I Open your mouth. That. That, um, I don't know if you've ever watched Black Godfather on Netflix mm -mm. about Clarence Avon. Mm -mm. That boy. boy. Yeah, he was like... The, huge mover and shaker in music and helped a lot of people would make deals and mm. teddy brought teddy riley back after like you know lots of people would they, they'll tell you like he is got, got me out that contract got me into this um bill withers like man. somewhat discovered him but he at one point he was talking about something that happened in his life and he said man i don't have problems i have friends that's thorough what's the and, name of it again um, black godfather yeah, and I was like, right ooh, and it's on Netflix. And I was like, ooh, and I had to think about it in my life. It's like I'm always call somebody, yeah. this resource. Can you c connect in people? So, and I guess that's it. You help people, and then later, it's almost like all you have to do is express your need, mm -hmm. and that's people line up to help you. That's the key. You know, that's the key. A lot of people just want to ask. Like, you gotta, you gotta give a little something first. Mm -hmm. Like I always approach it. Like any type of like my network. Like peace is always like I go into it like damn bro like like yo is there any way I can help you with that or this and that or like yo you know I'm doing this if you want any kind of involvement mm -hmm. let me know like I always come with I come bearing gifts being yeah. an asset. before I ask you for anything yeah I, if I know you're an asset and you're somebody I tapped in with I'm not going to text you the only time I need something you yeah, know what I mean yeah. we're gonna talk for a week we're gonna talk about other stuff I'm gonna see how I can uh, support you you know what I mean first you know what I'm saying like and then. I'm gonna ask you, all right, so like, out of this, what I want. That's how it's like one hand wash the other. Like, you don't wanna be a penny pitcher. Like, I'll be having people just send me a cash at request without mm. saying, hey, how's your, how's your day going? You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, I just be getting cash at request and just stuff like that. Like, there's so many other ways I can help you besides you asking me for a cash at request. Just pick my head. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? A lot, that's family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm talking about family yeah. right now, but it's like, like that's you can utilize me in so many ways. That's using me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can so, utilize me. Using, I guess, your influence and your talents for good. Like, so you have your businesses, but you also pull up on protests. From oh, like, man. you talk about the George Floyd protests, mm -hmm. um, Flint with their water crisis, and mm -hmm. with the city kind of leaving them to just be poisoned. Yeah. Um, you showed up in both instances. Yep. How? Yeah. What, what? What was that feeling? In, in the sense of like, um, because you, like Josh said, it's like, is it? I guess it's like a social responsibility. Is it like you feel this tug where you like, I cannot sit here. Right, yeah, that too, and then just like just being one of those brands and one of those faces that should be representing this type of stuff, you know. What I mean, like again, like if not me, then who? Nobody else. Like no other rapper that I know from the city did that yeah. at the during that time. Like during that time, um, when George Floyd got killed, we brought George Floyd's family to Philly. Mm -hmm. I was a part of that team that did that, and um, it, it was really my team. We brought George Floyd, <clears throat> and we brought uh, George Floyd's brother. I'm sorry. And we brought um, Stack Five, who yeah. was like mm -hmm. really full force with that George Floyd movement, trying to get you know justice. And we had Rashid Wallace here, who's real vocal, you know. Um, 
and that's why I went to Flint with too. Like we just doubled it up and we went to Flint because now it's like, like damn, damn, I got some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to die. Damn, Wait, I we can get you. On. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. I'm just start we tickling. Get you Keep talking. Keep going. But um, that's what it was though. We uh. We did the Juneteenth thing and it, and it yeah. went so successful. It just was a, a peaceful pep rally. Um, just trying to just get the awareness and just bringing our people together for something positive. And we all felt real good behind that. And it was like, like I, I felt great behind being mm -hmm. a part of it. It was, uh, we brought Stack, we brought George Floyd's family, Rashid Wallace, a couple other artists from the city pulled up and it just brought our people together. And that yeah. was just so thorough. And we like, yo, what's next, man? What, what can we do next? And then that's when we went to the drawing board and we came up with the Flint and they mm. water. So we went to Flint, we had like three U-Haul trucks full of water mm. and just gave them fresh water. And it was like, like you be hearing about stuff and you be like, damn, it's bad over there. But you don't really see how bad it is, man, there. until you're there. And when we got there, like what it is, is like the Walmart and stuff might be like 30, 40 minutes away, and there's like people who aren't mobile. Like there was really like elderly women. Oh, she, she uh, got she locked out. <laughs> I got you. Oh, uh, love. It'll be an edit. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. It's this little ghetto. So they ain't got bottles. <laughs> yeah, water cooler. Yeah, yeah. Tough. Damn, my voice started going crazy. I feel like, but, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so like when we was in flint like you hear about this stuff but you really don't be saying how bad it be until you really get there yeah. and i'm like yo this is really bad like it, it, it'd be crazy like you know it's bad but you don't feel it yeah and when we went there and we really touched the people we was in like one of the roughest projects in flint and it was like like it was like a rough project, but yeah. then it was just like elderly people there who couldn't get out their homes mm. and go to the stores to get like go to the Walmart. The Walmart's like thirty minutes from this little projects that we was in, and um, we bringing the word. They was just so grateful. They're like, "Yo, thank you, man. Like I ain't been to the market in two weeks. Like yeah. stuff like that. And that's yeah. crazy. Dang. Like it's like you like like again like again like you know I'm, I'm a mercy person. So it's like I just damn wish I could do more. Like what else can yeah. I do? You know what I mean? It's like. Like, I know we can't save the world, but if we could do little stuff to sprinkle some kind of love out there and help in any kind of way, you know, that'd be dope. So, yeah. They was beefing in the project. Yeah. Stopped yeah. I was about to say that. I was going to leave crazy. that out. So, like, the project that we was in, it was like a like a blood and crip, like, projects. And they're literally, like, it's one project. Yeah. So, literally, like, you look down there and that's the person that you beefing with. Like, they're literally, like... Like, like Philly, you at least like a block or two yeah. down, literally a house or two down. That's crazy. So they were like really like like we didn't even know until we got there. They was like yo, like they was shooting out here three times yesterday. Mm. Like and, it, and when we got there, like we was bringing so much positivity to it that they all came together. The people that was literally shooting at each other and all that wow. the night before, or whatever, they all just was like came over and they was helping us and they was passing boxes to mm. the people that they was beefing with aunts and stuff like wow. that. You know what I mean? So it was just mm. like. And that's what we need. Ain't nobody here to help. So we just gonna sit here. They, they just gonna sit there and kill each other. But if some positivity came. Hopefully they squashed it after that. Hopefully. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, yo, we could come together and it could be of a greater good. And that's what we here for. You know what I mean? Like, I love stuff like that. You know, I'll be wishing I could do more. You know, it's just a matter of people listening. Absolutely. But that was that was dope. I really enjoyed myself in Flint. That was crazy. Wow. Mm -hmm. A whole ceasefire. So, all right, we we see your unique voice you bring to your content. Like you're like a smooth player. Like, ah, yeah, I don't want to make a comparison. I hate comparing artists to people, but it, it's kind of like you know early J, like early Jay Z. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't necessarily about being mm -hmm. a tough guy. You yeah. know what I mean? It was about I'm gonna get money, getting women, and more talking about the ills of the game, but. I mean, he, but he, he was always, he never let you forget that I was ultimate hustler. Ultimate you know what hustle. I mean? He, yeah, every time he let hustle. you know, he tried to tell you. Yeah. But um, what is, what's your typical day like? A typical day? Yeah. Depends where I'm at. You know, <laughs> like, really do. Um, it depends if I'm in LA or Philly. Like when I'm in Philly, it ain't no sleep because I'm only, I'll be here for a short, short uh, period of time. I'm by coastal right now. Yeah. And when I'm in LA, it looked like, you know, a lot of family time, spend a lot of time with my family, my daughter. And um, you know, once they go to work and go to school, I'll be doing a lot of I will be writing or I'll be doing a lot of productivity stuff, um, managing the daycares virtually, you know what I mean? I'll be on on the cameras or tapping in with the teachers, just making sure everything's running smooth from when I'm out there. And then when I am here, um, 
I'll probably be at the daycare tap then, mm-hmm. like really working or helping out any kind of way I can doing the administrative stuff. I I try to like map my days out where like I wake up, um, get the baby together, get her sent off to school. I'm real hands on <laughs> with my daughter. That's my baby, so Love we that. do everything for her. So we get her together early, and then I'll probably read a book or something or do something to clear the mind early. I work out like every day when I can, and then um. Then I do something like that I gotta do, you know. What I mean, do what we want to do, do what we gotta do, and and then you know, we we tap into everything, you know. When I'm here, yeah. go to the daycare, <laughs> check on the properties. I got Airbnbs here in Philly too, so you know, I, I be hands on when I come here and try to get as much done with the investment stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then when I'm back in the crib, uh, back in LA, I do a lot more of the entertainment stuff and yeah. just tap into pure like writing and gotcha. like tapping in with people. So I know I know I don't got this one listed on here, but one of the questions that we do ask is that like you already have your own music, so obviously I'm I'm I, I'm gonna give you a cheat and say your own if you want to. But if you could choose an album by any album, describe where you are right now in life, yeah, or even a song, or Ooh. even a song, or even a song, life, where you're at in life. Sheesh. Probably Nipsey Hustle and Motivate. I knew you were going to say that. I was already hearing it. Hustle and Motivate. Yeah. I got show today. I was hearing it right away. I said, he going to say Hustle and Motivate. Yeah, Hustle and Motivate. And if yeah, not that, sure. then I thought you would say Dedication. One dedication. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Shit, all of that, man. Just like, I'm just in a great place right now. And then like, the music just picking up and going crazy right now. Just yeah. adding to everything else. Like, I'm already, already was happy before the album yeah. came out. You know what I mean? So, now that it's out, I definitely feel like a brother is lifted <laughs> off the iron. But we got some new music yeah. out. Because that'd be a thing with me, too. Like, I do so much of the branding and everything, too, that a lot of times I'll fall away from, like, the new music. Like, people want to hear more music from me now. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. but I wanted to build the fan base. I got tired yeah. of dishing out music and people not really listening. Yeah. So, I start, I kind of did, like, a backwards approach. I started building the brand and everything, made myself a likable person. Mm-hmm. And now I put out music. So, now it's like... I should be listening to this person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I like what he's doing. I want to listen to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It has so. to be a little annoying, though, with artists because people want stuff faster than you can create almost. Mm-hmm. Man, I had somebody, my album came out Tuesday. I had somebody, one of my close friends who knows not to burn me out by Thursday, like, yo, bro, when the next one coming out, man? <laughs> I'm like, bro. You're like, like, come on. Let, let me let this marinate for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, I got like like two or three unreleased videos for this album right okay. now that are going to come out real soon. You know, I just put the selfies in the rave video out with mm. Benny. Fire. And then um the next video is going to be the Any Other Way video. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then I got a video for Black Dollar, so I'm going to follow all of them up. And then I'm going to go jump right into some new music. I got like two two projects done right now yeah. that's ready to go. So that's solid. Okay. I'm Always excited. have a plan, man. Always yeah, have a plan. Yeah, so I, I came in... Fully loaded clip. I'm yeah. ready now. Yeah. So I know we're, we're probably getting to our time. So one of the things that we always ask, and it's our, our key point question, yeah. is what does it mean to be a disruptor to mm. you? Breaking barriers, showing different stuff. You know what I mean? Show like exposing, like like how I was saying, um, exposing people to different stuff. You know what I mean? Like. There's a lot of rappers, a lot of ball players, but you know we doing a lot of other stuff outside of just the rap. You know that's just what where we, that's just the the bible for it. Like, huh? Yeah. You could go here and literally read the manual from the music, yeah. but we're doing other stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think that's like the disruptor um, piece for me. Just I'm doing a lot more than just what you see me or know me for. You know what I mean? You, like you might go to ten different people and they might tell you ten different things because. Like this other lady, oh no, I, oh he rap. Oh no, I remember him from he gave my son a scholarship. I didn't yeah. know he rapped. Or, yeah. Yo, he rap, but oh, no, he acted, this and that, or like, oh damn, that's the boy that was running the Airbnb that day when I was there. You mm-hmm. never know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I might be incognito. I wear a lot of different hats. So I think that's where the where I'm disrupting them at, for sure. Okay. We love that, man. Well, I'm I'm happy this episode came together. First and foremost, so again, thank you, my brother. I know you're thank here you. for a short Thanks, amount of so time. That's two years in the making. Two years in the making. We here. So much it's, is but, it, but it's crazy. I was to say it would have been a different interview two years ago. Yeah. Much different, that's right? crazy. Yeah, yeah that's we, crazy. We were just talking about, like, literally we was on set just talking about, you know, how, like, you know, 
things happen for a reason. You're in a, mm-hmm. you're in a place in time for a reason. You know, a all this came together for a reason. We've been so. having some deep convos on set too. Yeah, We've man, been it some, is, some this, great convos. This has been like our swan song, and I've mm-hmm. been saying that. Like, I think everybody on set and everybody on our journeys have gotten to this point where we're already all ready to level up, and we want to collaborate together as best as possible. And right. on this project, mm-hmm. we're at that point where like we can see it all coming together. I think yeah. everybody sees that yeah, for sure. So, yeah. shout out to Tony Chenault, man. He's yeah. been he's been a, a huge piece of like a lot of my success, a lot of my growth, man. Like. Just a lot of like cool stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Um, like being a part of Old Head allowed for me to start working on my actors real, which allowed the other commercials and other movies that I've been a part of. So it's like, you know, definitely tip my hat to that dude giving me an opportunity and you know always, always giving me that that uh, that tap on the shoulder when it's time to time to perform. Like he always called on me when 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 he need, he needs somebody to step up to the plate. You know what I mean? And, and I'm here. I'm ready. Anytime my dog call me. And you know he just he just tapped me in with something else that's big, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't really speak on it yet, <laughs> but Tom just made another play for me, man, and I'm very grateful for that boy. Grateful for you too, bro. Everything that y'all doing with Old Head, you behind the scenes and doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, kicking butt, man. I'm grateful for you. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. For sure, Great bro. For you too, Give man. you your flowers. <laughs> you All know. right, so tell the people. Who aren't following? Who, yeah. if you're not following, you late. But where can they stay up to? Like the newest, latest info on what's going on with you. Man, tap in. You know the social media is real dapper. Everything is real dapper. D a p p a. All the music, Google, everything, everything dapper. If you type in Young with Options, you're looking for the brand. All that's gonna pop up too. Merch, the businesses. You type in Young with Options, we pop right up. It ain't hard to find us. We around like a donut. <laughs> for sure. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, uh, that's it for us. Thank you yeah. for tuning in to another episode of Disruptors in the Culture. Um, maybe you discovered us on YouTube and you don't know that we have an Instagram. Disruptors ITC on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, just stay in tune. Okay. So, Josh. She got to shout it out. See you the know, shirt. This is our you prototype. See, you for, see the drone in the back? Oh, that's fire. Yeah, this one of our first official pieces, pieces of merch. Right that was the merch. Yeah, that's, like our, that's that. our first piece I'm of merch. I'm about to grab that and right so, now. I know you got our, some wood there. We got some links, so go ahead and cop up. But until next time, thank you for watching as always. And um, what do they, what do they say? Like? Follow, subscribe, share. All the above. All of it. Make it happen. I'll let y'all.